All right, so here's a random one. It's July 9th, 2012. This past weekend, we went down to Fort MacArthur, which is the Army base down in San Pedro near the Los Angeles Harbor. It is the, uh, I spent a lot of time there. Um, it is the location for much of the Under Angel story. It's where I got a lot, a lot of the inspiration. It's where the K-9 command uh, unit is. It's where the cemetery is. It's where uh, the batteries are, that type of stuff, the tunnels. Um, while we were there, they, they were having, every once, in a, once a year, they have a, an event called Old Fort Mac Days. It's sort of in a renaissance fair for military history buffs. Thousands of people come out, they set up tents, they dig ditches, and they do reenactments and role-playing and uh, representing uh, various eras, whether it's the Civil War or the Romans or World War II or Vietnam. These guys are digging ditches, they're making fires, they got their women churning butter and making parchments and roasting sheep on spits and the whole deal. But um, we just dropped in at the end of the day, um, and right there at Battery Osgood, which is uh, the gunning station. Anybody who knows me knows how many homegrown happy hours I spent there with Conan Vive and a lot of daydreaming and stuff. Um, they had people set up booths uh, uh, with selling memorabilia and relics and old magazines from the wars and, you know, Nazi badges and, and coats and hats and that type of thing. Well, there was this one particular booth that had something that caught my eye. And I am not a fashion guy, really. I, but I am a huge fan of uh, leather crafting, woodworking, whether it's like a you know a, a chair or a chess set or a beautiful you know leather belt or something, I just love the craft work of those two mediums, particularly. And I saw these things, and before I clean them up to put my own miles on them, I want to get them on video. Check these out. All right, pretty badass, right? I pick these things up. They're really heavy. They must be like five five pounds a piece. They feel almost wet or rubbery to the touch. I've never seen hide like this. It's almost black, so dark brown. But here's the thing. I look on the inside, and it's manufactured by a company called Edwin Clapp & Son. Boston Depot, they're made. Octo it's stamped October 13th, 1942. I'm like, whoa, but here's the thing. 12, my, so my size, 12, size 12, and unworn. I mean, what are the odds of that happening? It's like these things walked into my life, into my own backyard. You know, I didn't have to go anywhere. They came to me. Um, leather soles, uh, wood heels, basically unworn. So I'm going to clean these up. Um, I did a quick Google search on Edwin Clapp. Apparently, it was a company that made really, really high-end uh, men's shoes, like Oxfords and whatnot, during the 20s and 30s. Um, I think their patent dated back to the 1800s. And in the 40s, they were commissioned to manufacture uh, military issue combat boots. That's exactly what these are. Six eyelet, six hooks, um, you know, one-way ticket to, to wherever you're going, not coming back, you know. It's the real deal. So I will be cleaning these up, putting my own miles on them, and uh, come the post-apocalyptic era that may be upon us after December, you may be seem, seeing me... Um, strapped into these things, hitting the road, looking for water, fighting off zombies and cannibals. So, um, fun anecdote. This would be very much right in the zone of uh, what Pete Durrani would have been wearing back in the 40s and uh, even up through um, till tonight. Heavy combat boots, kicking ass, kicking through doors, breaking legs, getting in. All right, underangels.com.